Welcome back. We are here on eToro, and this is going to be my daily forecast for Friday, January the 29th, 2021. If you'd like to support our channel, you're welcome to hit the subscribe button down here in the corner, hit the like button, the bell button to see our newest videos, and you're welcome to join us over at Patreon, where you can get access to our full technical analysis, our signal service, and also our online trades and courses. The link is down below. You're very welcome. So we'll start by looking at the US dollar index and the foreign exchange market. So as you can see, we rallied above the 50 moving average today and then broke down quite significantly at the end of the uh, basically the beginning of the um, US session or the end of the European session. We basically fell apart here in the US dollar index and it had major implications for everything. So for example, um, the indices rallied significantly, stocks rallied significantly, uh, commodities, precious metals, and so on. So you name it, they all rallied. So the question is whether or not we are going to go lower. Um, and at this moment, it is basically a cliffhanger. The reason for that is because we have the 20 exponential moving average right here at roughly at uh, 19.25, and we're trading above the 20 exponential moving average. We have broken the 50, so we rallied above the 50 and then broke down, but we're still trading above the 20 exponential moving average. As long as that is the case, we could actually bounce from here. So we could see another bounce up towards the top of the bullish demand here uh, before we go back down. So we have tried to rally several times in the past. Most of the times when we have these major rallies, we have gone to the top of the bullish demand and then we have broken down to the bottom. The same here, and we went basically all the way down. And now it looks like we're doing some similar thing here, but just not as volatile as back in, in September. But at this point, we have not tested the, the, the top of the Bullinger Band. We have broken through the 50 moving average, and now we're trading just above the 20 exponential. So if we break below the 20 exponential, we are going towards the bottom of the Bullinger Band here, and it's basically the bottom of this range. So that is roughly at 89.43. That is basically as far as this will go. But that will have major implications for indices and so on. So we'll see. Technical indicators are, well, they're fairly all over the place. MACD is uh, very bullish. Stochastic is bearish. And uh, CCI and, and uh, RSI are basically flat at this point. So we'll see. A break about the 50. That will basically be very bearish for everything else. And a break below the 20 exponential, that is very bullish for basically everything else. So let's look at the Great British Pound US dollar. So we have rallied quite significantly today. We broke down a little bit yesterday, not even close to what other currencies uh, uh, were witnessing basically yesterday. So the 20 exponential here in the middle of the bullish band that is basically the bottom. We have pierced it several times in the past, but every single time we have rallied above it and then bounced uh, uh, from it. So at this moment, we're at the top of the bullish band, and um, usually when we get to the top of the bullish band, we see a minor pullback towards the 20 exponential or even lower than that. But we always have bounce, for example, like here and here. So it, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, we need to break the top here in order to go higher. And I don't really think that we are going to see that. If the US dollar, for example, completely falls apart underneath the 20 exponential, then of course, uh, we will see this go significantly higher. I think in the long run, we're going to head to uh, 1.4. That is most likely where we're heading to in probably in the medium term. We are in a nice channel here. 20 exponential is holding really well. Uh, pullbacks towards the 20 are basically major buying opportunities um, at this stage. And going all the way down to the 50, that is even better buying opportunity. So let's look at the US dollar again. So as you can see, we have rallied all the way up towards the top of the bullish band. We basically broke out of this channel that we have been in for the last few months. Uh, but we, we broke through, but we basically came back um, quite, uh, well, not very uh, much of a pullback, we, but we created this inverted hammer. So at this point, 
we are still training above the 50 moving average and the 20 exponential moving average. And we need to retest those moving averages again. At this point, it is probably too early to start shorting this, even though we have been in this massive uh, downtrend. If you wanted to short it, you should have still shorted it up here in order to basically lower your risk. To start shorting it now, you could basically see this bounce from the 50. That is possible. Technical indicators are more bullish than they are bearish at this point. So that is a possibility. However, a break below the 50 moving average and the 20 exponential moving average, that opens the door all the way down here to the lower part of the bullish band at 102.9944. So we'll see basically where this goes. But um, if the past is anything to, to go, um, go by, we should see this break the 50 and the 20 exponential in order to go to these um, to the lower parts of the level of the bullish band. Technical indicators, as I said, they are more bearish than they are bullish at this point. MACD is bullish, Stochastic is bullish, CCI is bullish, while the RSI is fairly flat at this point. So let's look at the Euro US dollar. So as you can see, we have tried to rally today. It was not much of a rally, to be fairly honest. We did break the 50 moving average, but still we have the 20 exponential above. So until we basically break the 20 exponential, there is no reason to go um, to go all uh, all in bullish on this. Uh, we could easily just uh, drop from here towards the lower parts of the bullish band um, if uh, we get rejected at the 20 exponential moving average. However, a break above the 20 exponential, that's roughly at 12, uh, 15, that opens the door to the top of the bullish band here, which is 12, uh, 29. We can see that the technical indicators, they are either flat or they are bullish. For example, the, the CCI is um, heading towards zero, so it's becoming bullish, but it's still bearish. Um, it's the CCI is uh, stochastic, is uh, bullish, MACD is bearish, and the uh, RSI is flat at this point. So this is just a waiting game. There's no reason to enter this market whatsoever at this point. So let's look at the Aussie dollar, US dollar. So as you can see, we have broken down quite significantly here, all the way down to 0 0.75, and then we pull back from those lows. That is a very um, good indication that we most likely will go higher. We are still underneath the 20 exponential moving average. We need to break above the 20 exponential in order to go higher. So we were in the channel here. And uh, we broke out of that channel, head towards the 50 moving week average, and now we rallied again up towards the 20. But still, we're trading underneath the 20 exponential moving average. Technical indicators, most of them are bearish still. For example, MACD is bearish, CCI is bearish, and the RSI is flat, while the stochastic is becoming slowly um, crossing the signal line here. So, yet again, if you wanted to enter this market for a buy-in, um, you should have entered here just above the 50 moving average, a stop loss underneath, and actually a target of 0 0.8. That is where I think this is going in the medium run. This was basically just a breakdown because we had the US dollar uh, depreciating for a really long time. And in, in, in the recent few um, days, it has been appreciating and therefore it has been um, fairly bearish for this currency pair. But target of 0 0.8 that is most likely where we are going at this point so let's look at us dollar canadian dollar so as you can see we have pierced in the top of the bullinger band here we went all the way up to 12.87.8 and then broke down again the last time we did that was basically over here so we went all the way up to 13.38 and then we broke all the way down to these very lows of 1292. So a massive drop within one and a half week. So whether or not we'll see that again at this point, probably. This is a very bearish a candlestick here. And this could basically um, imply that we'll be ready to fall all the way down to 1250. So technical indicators, they are still bullish. So um, tomorrow we'll... Um, show us where we're basically going. If we get a red candlestick here 
and we break the 20 exponential. And there's a lot of volatility that could basically shoot this within the next uh, week or two all the way down to 1250. So let's look at the Bitcoin. Yes, uh, ETR is really slow tonight. I have no idea what's going on here. So as you can see, we have rallied quite a bit today, but it's still not a really impressive rally. We have seen some of these rallies um, previously. For example, here, we have headed all the way up towards the 20 exponential, and then we just slowly broke back down towards the 50. We didn't even touch the 20 exponential um, at this time. Technical indicators, some of them are turning around. For example, CCI is showing signs of life. MACD is bearish. The RS stochastic is flat. The CC RSI is flat. So we may just trade sideways. A break below the 50 moving average opens the door to the, uh, the bottom of the Bollinger Band here at 26,000. But um, as I said in my video yesterday, it is very likely that we'll see this market go significantly lower so we could see this market fall all the way down uh, towards the first fibonacci retracements if we get it up here you can see we are right at the first fibonacci retracement if we break below this level here that opens the door to twenty-five thousand at this point and that and then it opens up to twenty-one thousand. so this is a very important um support level if this breaks, then we'll see a tidal wave all the way down. Uh, probably the 51st, we'll see whether or not that holds. If it doesn't, then we head towards the 61.8. And after that, the 200 moving average at 17,000. So that is not completely impossible. We have, um, the Bitcoin has done that in the past. So um, yes, we'll see basically what happens. Technical indicators here are basically all over the place. The CCI is showing us a little bit of life, but it's still way underneath zero. So it's still bearish at this point. So Kassik is bearish, uh, MACD is bearish, and it's about to cross the zero here, be going into a, a bearish trend. So yes, it is not looking really good for Bitcoin. Probably the only thing that you could say is positive about this is that the 50 moving average is holding. But we are still trading underneath um, the 20 exponential, you get the Bollinger Band up here again. We are still trading underneath the 20 exponential moving average and the 50 is right underneath. So we could rally up towards the 20 exponential and then break down again like we did here. So we'll see basically what happens. Um, but I think that the massive rally from Bitcoin probably is over. We need to break the 20 exponential and then we'll probably go towards the 40. Break below the 50, that opens the door to much, much lower levels. So let's look at Ethereum. So as you can see, we have rallied uh, quite a bit. 20 exponential is holding really well for, uh, for Ethereum. It has outperformed Bitcoin for a very long time now. Um, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin has actually been declining while Ethereum has been on the rise. And uh, that is quite interesting. Um, the reason for that, well, probably because people can see that these lower or less known and less valuable uh, cryptocurrencies are probably, there are more gains to be, um, there are more gains to be won here uh, compared to Bitcoin. It is also it's very expensive at the moment, and and, and these cryptocurrency like uh, Ethereum and uh, Litecoin and, and Nero are less expensive, and therefore uh, probably more gains to be won in the in the long run. At the moment, we're trading at uh, thirteen thirty one. Uh, twenty exponential is holding. If that twenty breaks, then we're heading towards the bottom of the Bollinger Band here at the ten sixty two, and after that, the fifty moving average. But as long as the 20 exponential is holding, and this will just slowly go further and further. When we get across uh, 1447, and then we're really going to take off in this market. So let's look at Litcoin.
So as you can see, we broke down quite significantly yesterday, all the way down to the bottom of the Bollinger Band. And then today we rallied above the 50 moving average. So I think there's more encouraging signs for uh, this cryptocurrency compared to Bitcoin. We still have the 20 exponential above, but these uh, technical indicators are showing more signs of life in this cryptocurrency compared to, for example, Bitcoin. So if we break the 20 exponential, then we're head towards the top of the Bollinger Band here at 1.66 um, or the previous highs. It will be fairly overstretched if we went all the way there and you should expect a major pullback towards the middle of the Bollinger Band if that were the case. Uh, but still, we could also rally up towards the 20 exponential moving average and then just break down towards a hundred um, uh, hundred dollars or even all the way down to the 200 moving average. So we'll see if we start trending uh, underneath the 50 as a very bad sign for for Litcoin. So let's look at Nero. Neo. So we fell quite significantly yesterday. We rallied today, but we're still trading on between the 50 moving average and the 20 exponential. Um, the bottom of the Bulger band seemed to be quite significant support. We also have the 50 moving average here and the 200 moving average and also the Fibonacci retracement. If we could get them up here, we can see that the 50 Fibonacci retracement are also both, both here in this level or the 61.8 is right here. So in order to get through this level here, that is nearly impossible. This is probably as far as this will go. If all of these uh, support levels break, then we are looking at uh, a cryptocurrency that is going to drop at least down to 15 and probably even lower than that. So I would consider this probably the safest uh, bet uh, next to Ethereum. Um, this is basically what they're calling it, uh, Chinese Ethereum, uh, but um, this is probably the, the cryptocurrency that will um, has most uh, promising uh, long-term aspects as uh, the Chinese are very into um, this digital um, currency and also the digital world uh, our overall. So this is definitely a buy for, for, for this cryptocurrency. So let's look at some of the commodities. We'll start by looking at oil. So as you can see, we have broken down quite significantly all the way down to the 20 exponential moving average here at roughly, we were trading at roughly 55.32. So we did rally in the beginning of the um, session all the way to uh, 53.55 and then broke down. Technical indicators for oil at this current stage are looking quite dismal to be fairly honest. If we break the 20 exponential moving average, that opens the door to at least 50 or to the bottom of the Bollinger Band here, which is at the 30, uh, 48.73. And that's also where the 50 moving average is. We'll most certainly bounce from here. So it'll be really interesting um, whether or not 20 exponential holds. If it does hold, that will most likely bounce from here all the way up towards the top of the Bollinger Band, which is also at the $55 range and there you should see a lot of selling occurring but these technical indicators they are not looking very good so we could stick around here for a while we could also break the 20 exponential moving average and that opens the door all the way down to the 50 at 48.3 so let's look at natural gas So as you can see, we have rallied, we broke down and then rallied above the 50 moving average. If you should read anything, anything into this, no, not really. Um, we have done this several times before in the past. Ever since the, the very highest here in November, we broke it down, rallied, broke down, rallied, and then so on and so on. And this is just a continuation. Uh, it is not as bearish as it was in this period here. You can see it's basically waters off and just goes um, just goes um, uh, trading sideways here. So we could see something going like this, just up and down 
uh, where the 200 moving average is the bottom and the top of the Bollinger Band is probably uh, the top. But if we break below the 200 moving average, that opens the door to two. If we break, um, if we start trending above the 50 moving average, that opens the door probably to three. And that's most likely um, as far as this will go at this current stage. So, but my estimate is that we are most likely going to see this fall to the downside towards the 200 moving average, probably break it and head towards the two, and then in the long run, head to 1.5. So let's look at copper. So copper had a very nice day today. We fell way below the 50 moving average and also the bottom of the Bollinger Band here. We got very, very overstretched and fell to, uh, towards 3.49 before we rallied. So we rallied way above the 50 moving average, but we're trading underneath the 20 exponential. And um, yes, um, it is looking good for copper, to be very honest. If the US dollar starts depreciating again, then you could see this going all the way up towards the top of the bullish band, and that is at 3.7. So we have been an amazing run for copper for the last few months, or basically the last year nearly. All the way here, since the end of March last year, we rallied from 1.97 and all the way up towards the 3.73. And now we broke down all the way to uh, 3.5, give or take. Technical indicators, they are bearish, but some of them are turning around. So this could be an indication that this was the bottom of this pullback. And now we're ready to uh, go back to the upside yet again. So, so let's look at gold. So gold had a... Uh, well, to be fairly, very mixed day. So we did rally quite significantly all the way to up to 1863. And at the end of the session, we basically broke down. So the, this, will, oh, we will, um, this will be a case whether or not the US dollar starts to depreciate. If it does, then this will rally. If not, then this will probably uh, break down. So the 20 exponential uh, proved to be very very resistant in this mar in this market. Uh, we are still we are still within this um, triangle here. So we have the lows here, where we also basically stopped. We found support uh, at this line, and we have this upper resistance line over here which we have tested several times in the past and then broken down and so on. So my analysis has always been that we will most likely go into this corner. You can go back and watch my uh, old analysis for gold. Um, that's what I've been saying since we've basically been trading over here. So it looked like we found uh, this support line here a very long time ago and also this resistance line a very long time ago. And it was fairly obvious that this was going to go up and down, up and down. I thought we were we had broken through in gold here, but it fell back down really aggressively, all the way down to support, and then it started rallying, fall down, rallying, and basically going very choppy into this corner. So I do favor the upside for gold. I do believe that the US dollar will um, gradually depreciate over time as just been pumping uh, more and more liquidity into the market. Just look, uh, listen to uh, the Fed's um, uh, speech the other day and basically they're just going to do the same thing that they have been doing uh, in the past and that basically means that we'll print money and just um, increase money supply into the market and that should be very bullish for for gold in the long run. If we bring, when we break above this resistance line, we'll head towards 1900, and then we'll head to the top of the Bollinger Band here, which is roughly 1937, and then to 50, and then beyond that. So at this point, it's gonna be interesting to see. This support line is holding. 
and I do favor the upside. So we'll see basically what happens here. So let's look at silver. So as you can see, silver rallied quite significantly. And this is uh, uh, fairly odd uh, due to the fact that usually it's silver that follows uh, follows gold and not the opposite, op uh, the, uh, the other way around, I was supposed to say. However, silver has major problems where in this area where we are at the moment. So here, right in this area where we found major resistant is also where we have found major resistant in the past. So over here, over here, and so on. So if we manage to break through this resistant, which I don't think that we're going to do at this point, mainly reason for that is because we do have the Bollinger Band right here. I think we are going to see a pullback towards the 20 exponential and then gradually grind our way through uh, this uh, resistant area. However, if we were to fall from here, then we have major support underneath. So we have the 200 moving average here. We have this area here, which we have tested several times in the past and have broken down, have rallied from those, um, well, support areas every single time. So I do favor the upside for silver, like I do favor the upside for gold. In the long run, this should go significantly higher. So let's look at platinum. So as you can see, we have broken down all the way down to the 50 moving average. We did rally above the 20 exponential here and then broke down and rallied a little bit again. So it's going to be interesting to see where we are going. If we break below the 50 moving average, then that opens the door to 1000. If we rally from here, that opens the door to these very highs of the bullish band. So 1133. Uh, however, technical indicators are not ready for that at this point. So you may see in the uh, lower chart for the four hour chart, one hour chart, when this is going to turn around. Um, entry point here is possible with a stop loss underneath and a target of these very highs. So let's look at pallium. So we have gone back and forward today, rallied up towards the 50, broke down all the way towards the 2275 underneath the Bollinger Band, and then we managed to basically settle here at the 2.325. It's just more of the same. We are just trading sideways. We're going up and down, up and down. The highs are here at 2.5. The very lows are here at 2.2 or 2.1, uh, give or take. Um, so at this point, due to the fact that we have basically bounced from the bottom of the bullish band here, it's very likely that we probably go back towards the 20 exponential. Uh, we'll see. Technical indicators are turning around. They are um, looking more favorable to the upside and then down to the downside. So let's look at aluminium. So as you can see, we tried to rally, and this is not a good sign for aluminium. We did rally towards the 20 exponential moving average here and then broke down. Now we're trading at 1974. We have the Bollinger Band right underneath here at the 1949. So there's not a lot of move uh, for uh, this uh, precious metal. Yes, if we break below these previous lows here, that opens the door to 1900. Um, I still... It is very difficult to basically say. It's it. It seems like we're just going like this and then going down towards the 200 moving average. That's what this looks like. It doesn't look like there's much momentum to the upside. Technical indicators are also looking fairly dismal for aluminium at the moment. Stochastic is crossing the signal line. The MACD is bearish. The CCI is bearish, and also the RSI is bearish. So at the moment. I, it does favor more the downside than the upside. So let's look at nickel. So nickel has tried to rally above the 15, 20 exponential, broke down, trading at 17, 700 and the 65 at this point. Um, I think they were going towards the 50 moving average, uh, which is at uh, roughly 17.081. Technical indicators are looking dreadful for this uh, for nickel. So 
this will probably be one of the major buying opportunities if it gets all the way down to the 50 moving average and rallies from there. We haven't had many opportunities like this in the last few months. One was right here, the other one was over here, and then we had one over here as well. But um, these pullbacks here are fairly rare for four nickels. So um, we'll most likely try, if we bounce from here, then a stop loss right on the, underneath the 50 moving average and a target of these very highs. That is uh, what most likely we'll do in this case. So let's look at sugar. So as you can see, we continue our uh, downtrend towards the 50 moving average. Technical indicators for sugar are looking dreadful, so it's just a matter of just waiting until we get as low as possible to the 50 moving average. If we see a pullback from here, then that is a that is a, that is a sign that we could basically buy this and target the top of the Bollinger Band here at 0 0.1656 or the top of this range here, which is a little bit higher at roughly 0 0.1670, with a stop loss right underneath. So uh, a break below the 50 moving average, that just opens the tidal wave all the way down to 0 0.14 and probably the 200 moving average. So let's look at cotton. So as you can see, we have broken the 20 exponential, heading towards the bottom of the Bollinger Band here at 0 0.7088. And, uh, well, I'm pretty sure we'll head all the way down to the 50 moving average. This would be a major buying opportunity if that were the case. Last time we touched, uh, we're even close to the 50 moving average, it was all the way down here in the middle of November when we were trading at 0 0.6793. And since then, we have rallied all the way up to um, 0 uh, 0 0.8283. So a massive move to the upside. So... Let's see what happens here. Uh, there is no reason to enter for a short here or even a buy. Um, however, if we rally from here, then it is possible to enter for a buy. But otherwise, wait until it gets all the way down to the 50 if that is possible. So let's look at Cocoa. So as you can see, nothing really happens here. It is just more of the same. We're trading in between the 200 moving average and the 20 exponential moving average right in the middle here on the Bollinger Band, and uh, well, there's no reason to enter this market until it breaks the 200 moving average to the downside or breaks the 50 moving average to the upside. Otherwise, we're just going back and forwards, and it's just a complete pure gamble in order to enter this market. So I'll leave it at that at this current stage. So let's look at wheat. So as you can see, we have been back and forwards. We did rally from here just above the 50 moving average, but this does not look very impressive. Uh, this was, of course, a, a major rally, but uh, but this candlestick here is not looking very good for weed. This uh, indicates that we ran into major resistance here. A lot of sellers came in and pressured this down. And at this point, point, we're probably going all the way down to the 50 moving average. And usually when this happens, you also break the 50 moving average. So a break of the 50 opens the door to 600 and probably all the way down to the 200 moving average. So uh, we'll see what happens here, but this is this candlestick here, it does not look very good for, for, for wheat. So let's look at the, the US indices and also uh, the DAX. So we'll start by looking at the SPX or S&P 500, which is also called. And as you can see, we had a horrible day yesterday. It broke down all the way down to the 50 moving average at 3,716. And today we had a fantastic day. So question is whether or not we continue the rally. Uh, I am in doubt. Um, usually what happens is when you have such a massive move to the downside, you had a similar move to the upside but around 50% of the move to the downside. And that is almost what we are seeing right here. And that's why I'm in doubt whether or not um, we should consider this as a continuation of this channel, because we are inside the channel again. But we could see um, another run towards the 50 moving average, and that would be uh, very bearish indeed. 
I don't think that we're going to break down like we did here. That's not what I'm saying. The 50 moving average and the bottom of Bollinger Band were very supportive, but it could take some time before we continue all the way up to 14 uh, to 4,000. Technical indicators are, well, they're slowly turning around. They're still bearish. So we basically have to see. Um, we did not trade this. We did trade the, the NASDAQ, which did as well really good. But people that entered the market right here, they did a really good job. I just don't know whether or not we are going to continue all the way to the top of the bullish band uh, or we have a pullback and then continue to the upside. We'll have to see what basically the market says when it opens again. So let's look at the Dow Jones. So the Dow fell um, earlier in the session way below the Bollinger Band. It went all the way down to 30,016. Uh, and well, 30,000, that's where basically people are 30,050, uh, give or take. And then now we rallied and we're trading in between the 50 moving average and the 20 exponential moving average. Um, I do favor more Dow to rally further. Um, it, it, is, it looks more, um, more favorable to the upside. However, the NASDAQ, S&P 500, and the Dow Jones usually follow each other. If one falls, the other one falls as well. So it's just as good as just trading one of them, to be fairly honest. But if you want to trade all of them, then, then that is also just fine. Technical indicators, if we look at them, then they are not looking very impressive. Even though we had this massive rally today, we did pierce the 20 expansion moving average, but fell quite aggressively back down. So we went all the way up towards 30,916, uh, 30, and now we're trading at 30,678. So we technically have to see what happens. I don't think that we're going to drop below the 50, because that will open the door all the way down to the 200. And uh, we haven't been there basically since November. So we'll see. Um, we could basically go back towards um, the 31,500 level. Uh, that could be a shot, but um, a pullback towards the 50 moving average, that is also possible at this point. So let's look at the NASDAQ. So as you can see, uh, we fell all the way down to 12,912 uh, 12, and then rallied up to uh, 13,400, give or take. And now we're trading at 13,323. So we're trading above 13,300. That's a very good sign. Technical indicators are not very impressive, to be very honest. RSI flat, CCI is flat. Stochastic is bearish and uh, MACD is flat as well. So we'll see what happens here. I would not be surprised if we turned around all the way towards the 50 moving average. That I would not be surprised at that. Actually, that would be um, probably the best trade that you could do at this point. Uh, we are fairly high here in the RSI. That means that if we manage to rally all the way up towards the Bollinger Band here, will be at roughly 70 at that point. And that just means that we'll have another drop similar to this one at that some point. I would prefer this breaking slowly down towards the 50 and then having a try at roughly 14,000 from 12,700, give or take. So we'll basically see what basically uh, the market says when it opens, uh, but I, I doubt that we are going to just go straight back to the very highs. We'll see basically what happens here. So let's look at the German DAX. So as you can see, we fell extremely hard, way below the bottom of the bullish band, way below the 50. I, at, some, at one point, expected this to go all the way back down to the 200 moving average, a similar move to this one. But... In the middle of the session, basically the end of the European session, the beginning of the United States session, um, US session, it rallied. And now we're trading uh, above the 50 moving average. And at this point, uh, it is more likely, I think, that DAX will rally up towards the middle of the bullish band here and then break down. This is a very nice looking hammer here. There was a lot of buying occurring right here. 
technically indicators for this are also looking not good, but they're better than compared to the Dow Jones and now the S&P and the NASDAQ. So at this point, with a stop loss underneath here and a target of the top of the Bollinger Band, roughly 14,000, yes, that is a probable trade at this point. So hope you found this helpful. You're welcome to write to me on the Patreon if you have any questions. Otherwise, good luck and thank you very much. Thank you.